think I'm the product of of my you know my upbringing. My parents are very open-minded. They're very kind, caring people, and they always taught me not to discriminate against anybody. Really, really, you know, religion, culture. Um, colour, anything and I think that provided me with a, the foundation to to research, become the person that I am today When people see me now as I am wearing hijab and, and obviously you know the people that knew me before I think a lot of people's first impression is that um, oh look at Mel, she married um, a Muslim guy and you know kind of look at her now it's a shame look what she has to be like you know now she's oppressed kind of thing and a lot of people associate me looking the way that I do with maybe because my husband wants me to or maybe it's something that I've been told that I have to do and it's just it's completely against you know the, the religion and, and the reason that I'm doing it I think uh, you have a unique um, insight when you wear the hijab and really why you do wear it um, and it's not for anybody else it's not for anybody else but you know for yourself um, and for the sake of Allah you know that's that's the reason we wear that not because anybody else has asked us to it was funny I went to have my hair cut the other day actually and um, Obviously, I went into the salon with my hijab on and then, you know, took it off. And um, I sat down and I was having my hair cut by the lady. And she said, oh, so you're, you're married then? I said, yeah. She said, presumably you're married to a local. <laughs> and she just assumed because I wore hijab, maybe I'd married a local. And maybe they had asked that, you know, or, or told me that I had to wear it. Um, it's just another example, I guess, of people's prejudice towards it. You know, people often assume you've been forced to wear it rather than it's um, it's, it's because of your own choice. But I took it upon myself, you know, and I think we should to explain, no, you know, that's not the reason why I wear it. This is the reason why I cover up. And, you know, I don't think people should be dismissive. Um, people want to learn, and that's how I started off. Um, and if people had been dismissive of me, then, you know, I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I think as Muslims, you know, we need to take it upon ourselves to take time to explain things to people. Expected that you know we, we would be married. Basically, when I when I first moved here, um, I didn't really come with any great expectations when I came to Dubai. I just think I wanted it was more of a career move than um, uh, any particular. I was interested in, in the cultural change as well, but it was more of a career move and with, with no kind of other expectations attached to that. Um, but I don't know. I just I I changed quite a bit when I first moved out here. And in terms of the people that I started getting to know at work, and you, you, when you come from England, you come with certain stereotypes about what Muslims are like and what an Islamic country is going to be like, and then it's completely not what I expected. Um, and that got my interest, really. I thought, you know, it's, um, it's my impression of Muslims or my impression of Islam wasn't the same as what it was anymore when I had moved from the UK. <laughs> Unfortunately, people think that Islam is linked to oppression with women. Okay, so it's something that you know you see the way maybe that women dress, or you see um, the way that some people treat their wives, or you, you you hear you hear stories and you just think, okay, Islam oppression with women. You know, it's an unfair religion. It's you know all about the hierarchy of men. And meeting Mahmoud, it's just completely the reverse. The history of Islam as well. Women have always yeah, been very I prominent mean, figures in yeah. Islam. Very well educated people, business yeah. leaders. You know. Khadija was, you know, a business, business lady um, herself. But again, in the UK, completely not the the, the story that you're that you're, you know, told about um, Islam and about Muslims. I 
there, were, there, were, there was always something. I always believed in something, but I wasn't really sure what. And um, other religions that I had come across didn't really answer any questions. And to a certain extent, I thought their answers to certain questions, I, I, didn't, I didn't really sort of, you know, buy it. Um, and then I think um, when I came across Islam and I moved out here and I, I you know, uh, learned more, what I realized about Islam and what I like about Islam is it's okay to ask questions and every question you, you ask should have an answer. Yeah. Whereas with other religions, sometimes it's just like, it's, you know, faith. You just have to have faith. There's blind faith to everything. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's okay, but it's not, it's not good enough. And this is why we always say, you know, I, I, I do, st I do still have questions and I will still find the answers to them, but it's everything so perfect, everything so well put together, yeah. that that's, that's what kind of convinced me. You know, if there's any mistake in every, any religion, it can't be divine. The, you know, it, the only thing that can be divine is something that is perfect, and, and because none of us are perfect and we all make mistakes, we, we have a, a confidence and a belief in our heart that, and that's where belief comes in, or Iman comes in, that there will be there is an answer for everything and it's in that one book and obviously that's explained through um, our, our prophet um, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you know so whatever we whatever we look for that th there will be an answer for, for that question My friend Ferris and I, uh, we went to university together um, and, um, you know, we used to get together and, you know, try and keep our Iman strong and learn and, you know, encourage each other in that way. And when we came out here, we both realised it's actually quite difficult um, to find those kinds of things. So, obviously, again, we've started to do that. We get together once, whenever we can. Um, Ferris is still living in the UK at the moment, so whenever he's over here, we kind of get together and we'll try and recite some Quran and... Um, du'as and um, really hopefully help our Iman grow and sustain that. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم it's a good way of maintaining your Iman and what was one of the good advantages when we were in university was we got to do this on a quite a regular basis and uh, we had a lot of free time to do it but in, in, when you start working you don't quite have that same time so that's True. one of the reasons reasons we do it. Yeah. Um, nowadays we've made a rather dangerous separation between mm. our daily lives and activities and what we do for religion and we've, we've created this artificial barrier. Mm. So doing the, these halakot is a nice way of integrating mm. these practices into our lives again, which is, um, quite, which is quite important. So are you looking forward to Ramadan this year? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, definitely. I think less pressure, obviously. Mm. Um, can obviously enjoy it a little bit more and do some of the duties a bit better. Yeah, definitely. It was really tough last year because we were working for um, a company that didn't um, necessarily let us take time off when we when we probably needed to and when we should have been able to during Ramadan. Um, so it's very difficult. Um, but now, alhamdulillah, you know we have our own business, so we can you know we can relax a bit yeah. more, can't we? We can. We can take time off and do the right kind of things, make sure we're reading and make sure we're, um, you know, we're going to the mosque where we need to. Allah knows you better than you know yourself. So sometimes certain things happen and you think, should we really get married or is it really going to work out between us? But then everything happens in the right direction. Yeah. You just think, yeah. you know what, it's out of our hands. It's, yeah. it's meant to be for us to be together. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, everything's, you know, been, been perfect, I would say.
mean, it's, it's a shame because there's obviously a lot of companies. Slowly, I fell back. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> My role um, as uh, chief advisor to the uh, to the uh, framing. But you know, I will get the last. Uh, <laughs> I'll get the last say on which frame we go for. Well, you did do it. So <laughs> I'll get, I'll get the right for that.